We are seeing many rocket launches nowadays in many countries from government organizations such as NASA and ESA, as well as private companies like SpaceX. But there is one country whose space program, which is less known but is the most efficient of all, we are talking about Israel, an Indian National Space Agency, in today's video of Discoverzen. The Indian Space Research Organization, Israel, is the National Space Agency of the Republic of India. Headquartered in Bengaluru, it operates under the Department of Space, DOS, which is directly overseen by the Prime Minister of India, while the Chairman of Israel acts as an executive of DOS as well. Israel is the primary agency in India to perform tasks related to space-based applications, space exploration, and the development of space-related technologies. It is one of six government space agencies in the world that possesses full launch capabilities, deploy cryogenic engines, launch extraterrestrial missions, and operate large fleets of artificial satellites. Israel was actually formed way back in 1962. The Indian National Committee for Space Research, as it was then called, was formed under the leadership of Vikram Sarabhai and physicist Kalapathy Ramakrishna Ramanathan. At the time, they had no resources to speak of, a small pool of scientists and barely any funding. In fact, for the first rocket they launched a year later, they were transporting the parts to be assembled by bicycle. And now, more than 50 years later, they are launching rockets to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Israel built India's first satellite, Aryabhat, which was launched by the Soviet Union on April 19, 1975. In 1980, Rahani became the first satellite to be placed in orbit by an Indian-made launch vehicle, SLV-3. They subsequently developed two other rockets, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV, for launching satellites into polar orbits, and the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, GSLV, for placing satellites into geostationary orbits. In January 2014, Israel used an indigenous cryogenic engine, CE 7.5, in a GSLV D5 launch. Israel sent a lunar orbiter, Chandian 1, on October 22, 2008, which discovered lunar water in the form of ice, and the Mars Orbiter mission on November 5, 2013, which entered Mars orbit on September 24, 2014 making India the first nation to succeed on its first attempt, as well as the first space agency in Asia to reach Mars orbit. Israel's Mars program was the cheapest ever. The budget for this mission was just $74 million. In comparison, the budget for the movie The Martian was $108 million. So efficient that they could reach Mars with a budget less than a Hollywood movie. On June 18, 2016, Israel launched 20 satellites in a single vehicle. And on February 15, 2017, the organization launched its heaviest rocket, Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III, or GSLV MK3. On June 5, 2017, it placed a communication satellite, GSAT-19, in orbit. With this launch, Israel became capable of launching four-ton heavy satellites into geostationary transfer orbit. On July 22, 2019, they launched their second lunar mission, Chandian-2, to study lunar geology and distribution of lunar water, but due to some technical issues, the mission failed, as the lander lost communication with ground stations while attempting a soft landing on the moon's surface. Their future plans include the development of the unified launch vehicle, small satellite launch vehicle, development of a reusable launch vehicle, human spaceflight, a space station, interplanetary probes, and a solar spacecraft mission. Now, let's see how Israel is so efficient in launching rockets to space. Israel pursues the indigenization program for critical components and materials with industry participation to reduce the dependence on imports. The Indian industry is also contributing significantly to the designing, manufacturing, and testing of components and materials, as well as subsystems as per Israel's requirements. Cost is also a factor kept in mind since the inception of a project. India is a country where the budget is not enough to spend lavishly such as NASA or the European Space Agency. India can't spend hefty amounts on scientific exploratory missions. Reusing the same tried and tested workhorse PSLV for multiple missions 
also helps keep the launch budget under a tight leash. Israel keeps a strict vigil on every stage of the spacecraft's development. Therefore, they are able to avoid wastage of products. A senior scientist working on the Indian Space Organization told Outlook that India spends around $1.2 billion a year on its space program. While in comparison, NASA had a budget of more than $20 billion until last year. Significantly, in 2018 and 19, union budget, a sum of 2.3 billion Indian rubies or $31.1 million was allocated for undertaking space science missions and interplanetary expeditions under which the Department of Space has to deliver. Indian lunar mission Chandia-2, the readiness of two subsystems for Atia L1 mission, 35 publications from space science missions, release of two terabytes of space science related data to public utilization, 250 research projects in academia supported through the Israel programs, in India, the cost of hiring talent is far less compared with the West. Engineers in India cost much less than those in the US. The approximate annual income of an aeronautic engineer in the United States is just under 105,000 US dollar. Whereas in India, the higher end of the scale for engineers there is less than $20,000. Scientists and foreign organizations are hired before a particular project begins at hefty contracts, but the Israel designates its permanent employees ahead of a project or a mission. This makes the entire mission much cheaper. India is globally touted for its cost-effective space missions. Chandian 2, for example, is revered for being cheaper than producing Avengers Endgame. Mangalian is celebrated as the most affordable mission to Mars in the world. But there's a catch. Cutting down on cost for space exploration means that India is able to collect lesser data and its missions are quick. When you look at the whole picture, you will find out that Israel is not investing in these projects as long-duration missions. Let's take an example of the European Space Agency. For instance, they classify their space missions into three categories. The S-Class, the M-Class, and the L-Class. Small, medium, and large class. NASA also classifies its mission from Class A to D, depending on the priority of the mission. Its national significance, the mission's lifetime, and how much it's going to cost. There are a few American missions that have been going on for over a decade, and that takes a lot of money. In India, on the other hand, most of the projects have very short timelines. The Mangalian was sanctioned and deployed within a span of two years. Gaganyan was announced in 2018 and has plans to get astronauts off the ground by 2021. Even Chandian 1, India's mission to the moon that led to the discovery of water, was announced in 2003 and launched by 2008. It was planned that the mission would operate for two years, but communication with the probe was lost after 10 months. The Mars Orbiter mission, or Mangilian, was sanctioned in 2011 and launched a mere two years later in 2013 on a budget of $74 million. NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution spacecraft, or MAVEN, on the other hand, cost $671 million and launched a little later in 2013. When Israel launched the Mars Orbiter Mission, or MOM, it was touted as a technology demonstrator mission. India had never gone to Mars before, so the main purpose was to reach there and take those sojourns of months and do some basic science. Secondly, Israel went there on a PSLV rocket. PSLV can only carry spacecraft that's at most 1.5 tons. And if we look at the comparison, the MAVEN by NASA was much heavier. MAVEN was laden with a lot of diverse instruments, whereas Israel's MOM was carrying only five instruments. So there's not much science to be expected from the Mars Orbiter mission by Israel. Even if we look at the disadvantages of going cheap, it's really impressive that space agency like Israel can do a real mission to the moon or Mars with such a low budget. So, now we all know about Israel and how they are the cheapest and efficient. Now, let us discuss how will SpaceX set up a colony on Mars? Well, that sounds like a different topic to investigate on Discoverzen.